I'm Margaret Ryan for Clean Skies News. I'm at the Cox Pavilion at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas at the Clean Energy Summit 2.0. And I'm talking with Dr. Sajad Ahmad. He's a professor here, and he's a recipient of the National Science Foundation Career Award, a very prestigious award. Dr. Ahmad, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me here. Tell me a little bit about your work. What does this award in entail? Well, our research group at UNLB, uh, we are looking at the interaction between urbanization, uh, water demand, energy demands, and climate change. Okay. Now, it's, it's a very complex and dynamic interaction. With growing population, we need to provide housing and urban infrastructure to that population, which impacts the hydrological cycle. More areas develop, lesser water infiltrates ground and we also need to provide more energy. Now water and energy they have a very interesting nexus. To move water around in an urban infrastructure, to clean it, to distribute it, we need enormous amounts of power. And also to run power plants for cooling water requirements, there are water requirements. And of course depending on the source of energy there's a carbon footprint which eventually leads to global warming and rising temperatures. And your model that, tries to put all of this together? <laughs> yes, that, that's the goal. So we're trying to capture these interactions in a computer simulation model. And eventually, water managers in the valley should be able to use it as a decision support system. And they should be able to evaluate different short and long-term water management policies. Uh, from long term, I mean 30 to 50 years into the future. Now you say the valley. Is this specific to this area of the it's rather arid area of the West, or could this be applied any place? Uh, the uh, architecture of this simulation model is pretty generic, but you need to provide it uh, local data to, to use it anywhere. So in general, it's more suitable for arid southwest, but it can be modified for other regions too. But our main interest was in the valley. What, what sorts of decisions do these regional water managers have to make? What would they be looking to for guidance here? Okay, when they are looking at portfolio of options or different projects they want to develop, say increasing the supply of water, it could be water transfers from north, which they're working on now, okay. a 235 miles long pipeline. Bring, bringing water in from another basin. it could be other projects. So when they want to evaluate those projects, they can, using this type of decision support system, mm -hmm. they can look into uh, not only whether they will be able to meet the demands in future, but they will be able to see what would be the energy and carbon footprints of those development projects. And in addition to that, they should also be able to see uh, those projects, to what extent they will be able to reduce our vulnerability to climate change. When I say that, what I mean is that the hydrologic extremes such as floods or droughts, to what extent we will be able to to cope with those extreme events. Now there's a huge amount of uncertainty and kind of looking ahead with climate change, what it's going to mean on the ground. How do you account for that uncertainty level? Yes, that's right. There's a <laughs> huge amount of uncertainty and we, we look at the results from global climate models and, and there are several of those out there and each one runs different scenarios from doubling of CO2 to mm -hmm. sea surface temperatures and other options. So the way we incorporate it is through sensitivity analysis. So we run dozens of those scenarios from all models and, and generate and, and sample of outputs. And from there, we can put some confidence bounds there, 95% confidence as to what the future will look like. But How long a project is this? Where, where are you in it? Uh, we just got this award, and this is a five-year grant. This will involve several graduate students. There will be uh, undergraduate students working on it. Actually, we have uh, uh, 
two PhD students, two master's students, and eight undergrad students involved in there. And we also have high school students involved. So for an order of high school students, they will be working with us to develop a, a simulation game for high school students, where they will be able to see how uh, different conservation efforts at household level can impact the overall demand in the valley. So students should be able to simulate if they put a low flow shower or a low flush toilet, how will that impact the overall demand. So we are excited about that. that sounds game. very exciting. Well, Dr. Ahmad, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. I'm Margaret Ryan, Clean Skies News at the Clean Energy Summit 2.0 in Las Vegas, Nevada.